The New York subway, where an average of 5.65 million riders use the system on a daily basis. Not a bad size audience for a starving artist. Yet, most still seem to go unnoticed. Then there's Keith Haring, an American graffiti and pop artist known for turning the subway into his own personal canvas. Born in 1958 in Reading, Pennsylvania, Herring fell in love with drawing at an early age, fascinated by the cartoon art of Walt Disney and the illustrations of Dr. Seuss. After graduating high school in 1976, he briefly attended the Ivy School of Professional Art in Pittsburgh, where he studied commercial art. Soon realizing he wanted to take his career in a different direction, Herring dropped out after only two semesters. He would then spend his free time studying and admiring other artists of that time discovering a new passion for involving the public in his own art. He decided to move to New York City in 1978 and study painting at the School of Visual Arts. This would become one of the best career moves he would ever make. At the height of the graffiti culture and home to a thriving underground art scene at the time, New York left the door wide open for Herring and his yearning to create. Completely caught up in the energy and spirit of the scene, began to organize solo art shows and performances at local venues like Club 57, a popular hangout for visual artists and musicians. He started to use the black, empty advertising panels on the subway station walls for his own artwork. Using white chalk, Herring filled the panels with simple images made up of clean lines and cartoonish characters. Some of his signature and iconic drawings included dancing figures, a barking dog, and the radiant baby crawling infant emitting rays of light. Herring quickly gained popularity in the art world and the attention of New York City commuters and even the city authorities who were quick to cover his work with paid advertisements. By the mid 80s, he was having exhibitions and creating large murals all over the world. One of his most iconic murals was done on the Berlin Wall where he portrayed linked figures in the colors of the German flag, symbolizing the quest for unity between East and West Germany. Throughout his career, Herring befriended other iconic artists, including Andy Warhol, Kenny Scharf, and Jean-Michel Basquiat, who influenced his artistic perspective in the ever-evolving art scene. In 1985, he collaborated with celebrity singer Grace Jones, controversial pop singer Madonna, and a good friend of Herring's, did a television performance of her single, Like a Virgin, wearing a matching pink jacket and pencil skirt with Herring's artwork on it. He went on to open a retail store called Pop Shop, in New York City's Soho neighborhood in 1986, which sold posters, t-shirts, and other affordable items featuring Herring's signature design. He founded the Keith Herring Foundation in 1989, which provided funding and imagery to AIDS organizations and children's programs. A short time later, on February 16, 1990, Herring died at the age of 31 due to AIDS-related complications. Although he eventually lost the battle, the awareness he brought to the AIDS movement as well as his contributions to the art world are undeniable. Through his foundation, organizations are still receiving support and funding to this day, and his work will forever be credited in helping to bridge the gap between the high-end art world and street art. His work might be completely covered one day, but his impact will forever continue to be seen all over the world. <laughs>